Nice. Oh, this does such a good job. It's made some of these plugs. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Klansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. We are currently giving her a long overdue refit in Tasmania, with plans to set sail soon for the Australian summer. To support our project and remain notified of all upcoming releases, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. Previously on Free Range Sailing, you watched us design and build our custom hard dodger out of PVC foam, fiberglass and epoxy resin. If you missed this episode, I've popped a link to watch it now in the top right hand corner of the screen. Yeah, it looks so good. This is Marul's Hopolite helmet, isn't it? She looks like an old Greek warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Nose piece and eyes. So while you're away, um, what did I do? So there's, there's been a nut, there's been two more layers of 200 oh, okay. GSM glass gone on the, on so the roof. So there's three front. layers of 200 on here now. So there's three layers on there. Yep. Um, plus tape around the edges. So yep. this is, this is looking strong and I, I brought it around here. So this is really wear resistant and really strong as well. Um, check the weight. It's still nothing, is it? Do you want me to flip it round or have you got more to talk about? To no, I'll flip it over. So we've got all of this and we're just going to leave the fairing of this. So we'll get the inside done and we'll do all the rest of it outside once it goes to the boat. Yep. Down the sides here, uh -huh. there's a strip of double bias going yep. down there and there's a matching one on the inside. And that, that's, a, that's a, a column to transfer any forces down to the boat. So those two act together. So there's uh, 400, 400 double bias. Oh yeah. On top of the existing glass, glass. as well. So there's a what, one sheet of 200. So we've got there's 600 there. Yep. And 600 on the inside. Okay. So that's on the inside. <laughs> it weighs nothing. Yeah. <laughs> So in here we can see that double bias glass yeah. in there. Yep. So mirrored on the other side. Yep. This double bias through here and here is a framework. So while we've got a couple of panels of 200 on here and three on the other side, then we've got these bands of 400 double bias through there, through mm -hmm. there, reinforcing this back section here. Yep. And one through the middle and a couple under the windows as well. Yep. So there's just a bit of a matrix all sharing the loads. Yep. And once all this is glassed in the boat, that's when all of these are able to cooperate to sort of give us some rigidity. Under here, you can just see that red line and there's um, the same, that double bias, that 400 gram reinforcing under this brow. <laughs> so, and the reason being is just in case we sit on the edge there, um, we want that to be strong as well. I don't want that being snapped off. I can't put knees in here. Like I can't put any braces or gussets in here because we're going to have that metal framework. Yes. And the metal framework, I want this slightly higher just um, off the framework. So the frame's not going to give us any support like it did with the wooden one. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've gone to the extra trouble of laying in that double bias in there. Oh, and these ones here, like I laid another bit of 200 gram um, tape mm -hmm. down here, but because it was curved, I had to cut darts into oh, it. Oh, I see it, it yeah. Um, and the white stuff is all the fairing compound. So as soon as it sort of went tacky, I hit it with this white stuff. Okay. So we'll just we'll just sand this down because the white stuff is just the fairing compound. Yep. We'll get it nice and smooth, and then we'll put it um, a fairly like a fairly thin um, layer of the same thing. Q fairing cells. Compound just to fill up the weave because all of this stuff yep. has just uh, the, just the slightest fiberglass weave. So we'll get it really nice and smooth. Uh -huh. Then we'll throw the, um, the high build two part epoxy paint on. Paint on. Then we'll sand it again, have a look, repair any defects and then we'll glass it onto the boat.
So we can see from that little thing that if you're considering doing a fiberglass dodger build, one of these little flap discs to go with a variable speed drill gives you a really, really good tool. Like it's really controllable um, and it saves you a ton of work and it can get into a lot of spots. The, this is a large one, but you know, they come in various sizes. Three different sizes, we can pretty much do all of this from like shaping the inside of the windows to getting rid of the little high spots where I cut these darts. And like I said, it's really controllable. Like it's from that to that. And it doesn't, it doesn't throw, you know, big sharp particles and stuff like that. I've used this a lot. So if you're putting together a shopping list, <laughs> these little flapper wheels that go in drills, are, they're great. Mako oil. It comes from Mission Beach in Queensland, so why wouldn't I buy it? Support a Queensland industry. So while Troy's been pretty busy tidying up the winch, I've glued together some bits for our new stern seat that we've made out of marine ply because the old seat is pretty weather beaten and pretty rough looking. So Troy cut out the marine ply yesterday and I just glued up some supports. So these holes here are where the wind generator mounts. With, I don't think we have the piece here, but there's a U-bolt that goes around it like that. And the reason why we've built the mounts is because we want the seat to sit flat without having to cut a divot in it like that. So here's our tiller. The wood is a pretty rotten on the outside, so I'm scraping it back and going to give it a sand. I took the whipping off that Troy put on the handle with some cord. Took that off and the wood was actually quite raised from it. So that was pretty, pretty trippy. I'd never seen that before. Anyway, we're gonna sand this all back and then I'm gonna put a coat of epoxy on and then we're gonna decide what to do, whether we're gonna paint it or varnish it. I'd like to varnish it, but it's a little bit more maintenance. So we'll see what we end up doing. Lots of things on the go here today at our, uh, in our mate's shed. We have, probably looking for clamps. And we've been working on the Dodger. Ta -da! And next to me here are two pieces of wood that are for our hatch cover. So in front of our Dodger, there's a cover for the hatch because when the hatch slides open, it's obviously away from the Dodger and we need something to support a cover for it. So there's those two bits of wood. We're actually recycling the wood that we had before, that, that Troy built before when we did our first dodger back in Fremantle. So that's been sanded back and I've put a coat of epoxy on that. thickened epoxy with a roller and it's cured really well and dried and we are just wiping down now with some fresh water to remove any amine bloom. Amine's like a waxy substance that comes up out of the epoxy as it cures and if you leave it on there it, it, it can prevent other epoxy and we're going to be putting two-part epoxy high build paint on it can stop that from sticking. One way to get around it is to use peel ply, and a lot of people do. Um, we, we sort of wanted to get away from it. Just we're just trying to keep the amount of rubbish that we're making down, and we're you know we're throwing away a, a lot of stuff. So um, we just figured that we'd just put up with a little bit more finishing off. But the you know the amines come off with water, so we don't we don't really think that it's that big a deal for us. So yeah, everyone just make their own choice really. 
So there's a little bit of dust in here, but you can see that Aveen is normally like a light brown colour. And that's what's come out um, with the water when I squeezed out the rack. Well, we're nearly at the end of uh, the in the shed phase for the Dodger. Um, I'm just going to fair off the inside um, and then hit it with some high build primer paint, which is a two part epoxy with lots of solids in it. And what it'll do is once it's all one colour, it'll be much easier to see, you know, which parts need work uh, to, to clean them up and, and finish them off. All of the work that we've been doing at the moment has really been sped up by having access to this Festool um, random orbital sander and it's, it's got a couple of settings where you can really grind away or just use it as a standard random orbital. So our friend Jim um, lent us this so it was a really really kind offer of his that we, <laughs> we accepted pretty pretty quickly but it has made a huge difference. You definitely pay for Festool stuff but I can see where the money goes so thanks Jim. Anyway enough chat I am really pumped to get this this done get the paint on and get it to the boat you know it's it's finally starting to wrap up all this uh, six months of you know pretty much seven seven day weeks it's um, we're, we're trying to get this refit done most people would take a year or more to do this but we've just been really really going for it some things are going to be left undone um, starting to feel a bit tight you know but that's neither here nor there so yeah I'm starting to feel you know like renewed enthusiasm for it so we'll get into it the old mix for a can of 120. <laughs> this isn't top coat, so it's pretty forgiving, but you can just um, grab the brush and make sure there's no loose hairs. Yeah. When you have everything like the original, when it was the original construction, it's all multi-colors, it's really hard to see. Yeah. You know, where low spots and things like that are. Mm -hmm. But you'll see that once this is just all one uniform color, It'll be a lot easier to, to pick at the high and low spots. So we've got the we've got the primer on here now, and it's still got its brush strokes because we just sort of banged it on because we're gonna we're gonna now just sand it down with 240 grit and make it smooth and uniform. But even just that has helped us to see um, just you know just a few a few bits that need a little bit more fairing compound. And the other thing is we have to make a decision now of like where do you stop because you can either get it so everything's just perfectly mirror, which takes a long long time. Or you can get rid of the most egregious sort of stuff and just live with a few little bits. But I mean, certainly around the windows here, I want to get rid of those. Um, and in the corners, you know, there's a few little little divots. But to be honest, if this was just really just super, super smooth, like it came out of a mould, she'd look a little bit silly on our old boat. Okay, this stuff right next to me here. We're at the next stage and we cut out the windows for our Dodger. I made all my mistakes on the cheap material, as usual. Cut out these MDF templates. I, I put them down, made sure that, you know, what was, the, what was the dimension of plastic that I needed with the least waste possible. And it's two sheets of four and a half polycarbonate. We'll cut it out roughly and then we'll use these um, with a router, my favourite tool. We'll use these with a router to exactly replicate these because I know that they fit perfectly. So this stuff here, it's, it's not that colour, that's its protective sheen. It's actually a smoked, like a tinted window. We went with polycarbonate. Um, there's three real choices for, for the application that we're gonna go with. Um, you could go with glass, you could go with acrylic, which we did on the original Dodger, or you could go with polycarbonate. So glass is rigid and fixed. Um, our Dodger has compound curves in it, which the windows actually have to conform to. That is that makes things simpler in terms of our manufacturing, but it also makes the makes it stronger. Curves are, curves are stronger than flat surfaces. So glass is out. Um, acrylic is really great stuff, and we used it for these windows. Like I said, it's hard. Okay, acrylic 
you, you can't bend it and when you're drilling it you have to be quite careful and likewise cutting it you can you can chip and snap it quite quite easily it's a it's a hard plastic like i said so it has good scratch resistance and better than polycarbonate but it's more brittle but this polycarbonate i could put this in a sheet break right now without heat and actually bend it into a right angle i'm not going to because it's my windows um, so this stuff, it's, it's got a, that real great advantage that it's, its flexibility makes it really tough. It can absorb shocks without breaking and that's what we want in a Dodger in case a big wave you know, hits into it. Waves don't really scratch that much but they certainly can transfer their impact pretty well. So what we just have to do is just make sure that if um, a lot of salt crystals and stuff like that are developing just to, just to wash them off before we wipe the windows. It's not that big a deal, but um, we, just, we just have to live with that. Just a bit less scratch resistant than acrylic, but it has, it has other attributes that we really, really like. So that stuff was um, yeah, super easy to work with, no worries at all. It looks a bit ratty at the moment, but that's just the protective coat. If we just strip that off, the router did just a really great finish, <laughs> like really great. Never showed any signs of cracking, it just it felt great to work with. I said with this polycarbonate that you could bend it if you had a uh, sheet metal break. We don't have one of these, but I've got this vise here, so we'll stick it in there and we'll put a bend on it and we'll see how we go. No heat on it at all, this is cold, so we'll have a look. Oh, there's a heavy bit of steel. There you go. It's not all that impressive, but it proves the point that this stuff will bend instead of shattering. And um, it was the first time I'd heard it, so it was a good time to give it a go. We can, we can get a bit of a, a look at what colour it's going to be. Oh, nice. I'm going to need a bigger drill bit. I'm afraid the 3 mil sheet metal drills didn't do it, as good a drill as it is. I reckon this long series four might. Oh, this does such a good job. So this is sort of like a porcelain bit, now that I know what a porcelain bit is, not a spade bit. Um, what the, what the, <laughs> that's you laughing at me. What these are for is when you want to put a timber plug over a screw head, um, you can drill with this and it makes a nice flat bottom round hole of a known size. And then we've got some, we've got some plug cutters there that will make timber plugs that will fit exactly to that hole. So what we're going to do, um, drill out where the holes for the bolts are going to go through, we'll drill out to that, which is half an inch in diameter, and then we can cut exact size plugs, and we're going to do it out of Thermalite, which is the same stuff that we made, uh, well, lots of stuff on the boat, but mainly our fuel tank, and also that we've been raising um, all the stanchion bases and things like that on the deck. It's a type of foam, um, closed cell, very, very strong stuff, interwoven with some fiberglass. That stuff cannot be crushed very easily at all. So we'll be putting little plugs of that in. Some people might put thickened epoxy, but just by, because we've got Thermalite, um, if, you were, if you were replicating what we're doing here, we might, um, we might suggest that you just get some thickened epoxy and fair it off, but just remember where those holes are. So we've got the Dodger. Roped down, looks pretty good. The next trick that we're gonna do is that Troy's made some of these plugs. Two lots of six mil thermalite. And we're gonna put them in between the plug holes where our windows are gonna go.
the plugs for our windows epoxied into the dodger, I wanted to get a coat of thickened epoxy on the roof before we glued the dodger to the boat. To secure the dodger in place for gluing, we temporarily screwed it into the sides of the coach top. The first lot of glue was applied with a tongue depressor and pushed right into the cracks. Using a caulking gun the second time round gave us a nice even application, ready to be smoothed out. The next day we followed up with several applications of epoxy thickened with fairing cells. With the dodger glued in, we were ready to glass it in from the outside using several layers of fiberglass tape. Fairing cells were then applied to the joints and sanded back to a smooth finish ready for paint. So just under the dodger before it gets painted, we put some really big fillets in here. Because with the old dodger, we didn't actually have any fillets in there and we used to gather a lot of dust and rubbish and stuff and it was really hard to clean. So. We put big fillets, big fillets on either side um, and I had a lot of fun doing that <laughs> and polishing that up and sanding it. It was pretty time consuming but we tried not to be too pedantic otherwise we'd be here more months and we don't want that. <laughs> um, oh and I should mention also there's these three black dots. And that's where our compass is going to go. And we've actually holed out the foam and plugged it with Thermalite because you can't put a screw directly into foam. It won't have any grip, it won't hold. So anywhere where we're putting bolts and nuts or any fitting anything through the dodger, we've put these plugs in. At this point, we're going to fast forward a few weeks in time as a few other things took priority before we could complete the final step, the installation of our dodger's windows. So to stick this window on is going to need um, you know, a couple of millimetres thickness of this fixed tech to account for the expansion of the polycarbonate. And I think we've mentioned it before, this stuff can also be used to just stick windows into boats without fasteners, but I don't know, I wouldn't be left happy with it. But before we do that, we just want a, a thin coat just to spread it really, really evenly. Just so on the other side, what we'll see is just a solid black. So we're actually using it like a, a blackout paint. So this layer that we're putting on at the moment is not the, the final um, layer. This is very, very thin. No grease. Yeah, so it's just a solid blackout. I peeled a corner back and put masking tape and that's just so you can imagine once this is covered in fixed tape, getting your fingernails in and peeling this off would be pretty impossible. So I've left masking tape, so I'll be able to get that. I'll be able to get all the edges of everything and peel it off later on. Marking the shape of the window and applying masking tape over the borders is key to a good finish with the sealant we were using. So I'll just show you our installs from yesterday and they look pretty smart. Well, we think they look pretty smart anyway. So to get that neat line, we've just taped, taped all along. I just started putting the fixed tape. And he's a very good applicator. He always puts just the right amount on. Just onto our 200th tube of fixed tech. Yeah. So you probably put like two mil of fixed tech around the rim just to get that even black border. This, yeah. This is a millimetre. A millimetre. 
okay. around thereabouts. And that's just to make sure it's got that, um, that black finish. You'll see there's a black border here. Just black border. So you don't actually see the fixed tech underneath, you just see a black rim. When we put our first ones on, we, we masked it and spray painted it, which was a real pain. <gasps> Ooh, lucky. So I'm just doing the finishing touches to these windows that we installed this morning. And I think that's a good thing if you're working with this fix at 200, that's for polycarbonate. It takes a long time to skin off and dry, so it's worth waiting like four or five hours and then doing your final little finicky touches once it's skinned off because that way you're not going to accidentally brush in your fillets um, and make a big mess. Oh, so here we are, the Dodgers pretty much complete and we're enjoying it already we're sitting here under the shade it's just gotten hot today yeah <laughs> the UV is strong here and the Dodge is saving our lives at the moment yep. um, so we can see that it's it's all finished and it, we've um, we fared it into the boat so it really looks like it's um, part of the boat we didn't a lot of um, other boats you see like the coach top come up and then the Dodger sort of starts here you know yes. there's a bit there but we space is precious to us so we just sort of put it so it's more side. or less in line it might even just come out just a tiny bit but yeah it's, it, it does come out a tiny bit thing. but because we're all so narrow we really wanted to maximize the width that we had under the dodger we've kept our metal bar this um this edition um the owner one of the original owners that put this in did a really great job this metal bar is just amazing it's a real good safety feature it's very very strong so the dodger still comes back to here um, it doesn't rest on the metal bar at all if it flexed a bit, I guess it would it would touch it, but this metal bar is free of the dodges, so the dodge is completely just um, free supported. So we can take we can grab this metal bar and if we want to polish it up or do anything, we can yeah, easily clean it up. Four bolts and we can just bolts. rip it out. Mm, it's really great. Um, and that's the the dodger comes back, so we've got a good hand hold here. Like yep. We could have brought it all the way back if we want, but that's like in a in an emergency, you can easily grab that metal bar if a, it never really happens, but you know you can. <laughs> You can grab a hold of it. So yeah, we've just mounted our compass up here. It's just a this one's a hand bearing compass. I'll see if we need another one, um, but that one's pretty good. And we can do, 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 do sightings. And um, off it goes. It just lives up there, far from all the magnetic interference of the electrical stuff that's down here. Yeah. Which on our boat isn't really that much. <laughs> Yeah, we're really happy with the windows. They turned out really great. Um, that's the only thing that's really left to be done on the Dodger. We've just got to, we let the fix it cure yep. for, well, we've let it cure for a week now. We did it just before Christmas. So we're just going to have to tighten up on those. Cause you want a nice, like how many mil did you go for with the seal? With, the um, with this about a millimeter and a half of seal. Yep. Um, because we've got the bolts holding it in as well. A lot of yep. people that use this stuff will just use the sealant to hold the windows in. But actually, I don't know, just seeing a whole bunch of acorn nuts gives me a nice sense of security. <laughs> that's a good thing about boats, you can do your own thing. Yeah. So um, that's what we have. It looks, it's got a little bit of an armoured car look to it, I suppose, but nice and white and shiny. Yeah. Yeah. So just to finish what I was saying, we have to sneak up on those dome nuts and just tighten them up a little. Yeah. Because we, we wanted it. Didn't to want to squeeze the fix it out. But right. Now it's cured. We tighten it up against its gasket and it'll yeah. all be good. But we have to do that with all the windows. Exactly. How about you grab the camera, Troy, and we'll show everyone some more of the features of the Dodger. Yeah, I noticed in the comment section people were like, that lip's going to catch water. Well, <laughs> it was always supposed to. So yeah, let's go have a look. So here's our stainless fittings that we installed into the roof and they're sitting at the front here, which is where the water pools when it rains. And we'll simulate rain in a minute and show you. But this fitting here is a half inch fitting and it just fits your standard garden hose. Like... So... Ta-da! And we've got one on each corner. For fastening the windows we just use these button head machine screws with a socket a fitting and they look really smart. Mm. <laughs> so I can stand here we can make sure that we're not going to hit any coral bummies <laughs> when we're at when we're on the reef. You'll be holding the boom when you do, I reckon. Yeah. Below me here, we've actually constructed out of fiberglass a sea hood that will sit over the top uh, and that will be coming soon. So it looks a bit odd at the moment, but it will be 
a cupboard, uh, Seahood and Troy's designed it in such a way that we'll be able to remove it. So we'll be really easily be able to remove our hatch if we need to, which was a feature that we didn't have before in the previous Dodger. It was a fixed in box. Pretty good. We won't be using this style of hose. Like when you, you, you get like a, um, a food safe PVC, like clear, um, and that'll go on there. Most of the time we won't really want it to be on there. We do have that rain catcher still, um, but this is a way that we can use it just to catch rain. If, we, if it's really, really windy, we can still grab some from here. But the main important thing that we wanted was that water didn't pool up here and then wind can whip it and throw it. When the boat's actually moving at an anchorage, it's quite cool. It like sheds it off to the roof and, and down through these drains pretty effectively. It looks like it's a part of the boat. You know, it's not too high. Um, it sheds water, it's strong enough to hold both of us on it, so that's really great. It's such a strong thing, <laughs> considering it's made out of half inch lightweight foam. Okay, so that's our Dodger build, we're really happy with it. It, um, you know, we fitted in we tried to cut out all the boring stuff. It did take a few hours, you know, like there's a, there's a few man hours <laughs> few represented weeks. here. Yeah. Um, but I think we've cut a nice balance between getting something practical and then just not being too fastidious over the finishing. You know, we got it, we got it. I reckon this is a B plus job. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not triple A grade, <laughs> but that's, that's not who we are anyway. Yeah. Um, that's something that people need to consider is you can build something and then the difference between a two year refit and a six month refit or an 18 month refit or whatever <laughs> is the level of finishing. The construction phase all takes about the same same amount of time, but then just you can spend years finishing Bearing the Bearing and sanding. And we didn't actually really film that because it's not very interesting, like applying a whole lot of bearing compound and then continually sanding and getting it back. Yep. And we got to a point where we were just like, nope, we're happy with it, we're satisfied with it. We've got so many other things we want to do, so we're just going to install it and get on with everything else. Yeah, so if, one, if people want to take a bit of inspiration from that, you don't need to go to the, you know, you can get a, a reasonable result um, without being a boat builder and without just spending hours and hours on a torture board. <laughs> but it, it's, it's everyone's choice. Yeah. But there we go, we're happy with this Dodger. It's strong enough, it looks better than the old one. Yeah. It's easy to clean, it's, uh, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. us. Yeah, and I can't wait to go out sailing with it again. Oh. With it go out sailing with our boat again. <laughs> Just in general, we're that much closer, aren't we? Yeah.